Don't go away. Our feature film will begin shortly. Murder mystery movies from the 1930s and 1940s. Hastings Mystery Theatre. Before we get on with the show, please remember to give a thumbs up for this movie, and subscribe and select the notification bell if you've not done so already. Coming soon, to Hastings Mystery Theatre. I killed that man, it's a 1941 mystery. Just prior to his execution, a condemned murderer decides to tell the authorities who hired him to commit the murder. However, something tragic occurs before he can divulge the name. An assistant district attorney and a pretty newspaper reporter team up to discover the mystery behind the murders. Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I am your host and mystery master Randall Schaefer. Tonight, the Corridors of Mystery take us to 1932 for an I.E. Chadwick production, The Wayne Murder Case. Nasty old Silas Wayne intends to leave the bulk of his estate to his niece, but that will still leave plenty more money for others to share. Among Silas Wayne's possession is the cursed Candor Diamond. It alone is worth a fortune. One of those named in the will apparently does not wish to wait for his or her share of the money. When Silas Wayne is murdered, Detective Mitchell must find the killer. Against his better judgment, he allows a newspaper woman to help him. That leads to complications. The obvious suspects are all those named in the will, but they too start to be murdered. So, Inspector Mitchell is not so certain that the money was the motive. Starring as Detective Mitchell is Regis Toomey. He was born in Pittsburgh in 1898 and majored in drama at the University of Pittsburgh. After college, he appeared on Broadway, where he was a singer in Broadway musicals. But acute laryngitis ended his singing career, but he worked on as an actor and broke into movies in 1929. He was a character actor in A movies, but was occasionally the lead in B movies, like the one we're going to show you now. He played in movies and television his entire adult life. His final role was that of Doc Stewart on the TV show Petticoat Junction. He died in 1991 at the age of 93. Starring as the troublesome lady reporter is June Clyde. She was born in Missouri in 1909, and when her parents divorced, her mother moved her and her sisters to California. By age seven, June Clyde was in vaudeville and she was performing as baby tetrazzini she had a modest career and she retired from show business at age 48. she married director thornton freeland divorced him and then remarried him and stayed married to him again for the rest of her life let's return to 1932 and enjoy the wayne murder case <laughs> Thank you. 
instead of sitting around here for an hour. Like a lot of vultures. You're one bird that can go home. You know everything, don't you? I'm the secretary. A will is not a will until it's signed. Why do you suppose that old buzzard did make making so much ceremony over signing his will? Robert, I wish you wouldn't talk that way about your Uncle Silas. You know, he always has a reason for everything he does. Hmm. Yeah, Mr. Wayne. Who's the devil has been in here? Uh, nobody, so I don't know. What's happened to my medicine? It's empty. Where's Doctor Billy? He's upstairs, sir. He ain't with the others, sir. Is everybody here? Yeah, sir. Well, what are you standing there for? Yeah. I'll answer it. in particular. I'm going to have you arrested. Now, now, Uncle Silas, don't get excited. It's bad for you. Why, what's wrong anyway? Someone of you has stolen the candor. There it is, right on the table. A fake. A cheap imitation. A laugh. I suppose I know glass when I see it. Why, it is softer than that paperweight there. You're mistaken. Only a real jewel could cut glass that way. I guess I was a little hasty, Claude. Forgive me for not trusting you. Put it in the safe. Hey. 
Anything else, sir? No, that's enough. Hmm. I misjudge you. <laughs> You're a good boy, Claude. You tell the others that I will attend for them in a few minutes. And I shall remember you. In fact, you're going to be surprised when you learn what is in store. You're not like the rest of them. A pack of wolves circling around a dying man. Hello. Operator, give me police headquarters. Police headquarters. Send some officers to the homeless Silas Wayne, 111 Green Place. At once. Somebody here send for the police? Yeah. Where is he? Just follow me, gentlemen. Mr. Wayne is up there. Did you put in the call? Yes. I sent for the police. Somebody's going to be arrested tonight. What for? Why? In due time. Sit down. Wait here. That's what he is. Yeah, crazy like a fox. He owns half the town. Yeah? Oh. Hey, where's my medicine? Why haven't you brought it to me? You're late. The doctor. He's fixing it himself. Uh, I'll bring you down in a minute. Well, hurry. Yes. Yes. I'm 
ready for the family. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Mr. Wayne is ready for y'all now. I wish it were his funeral. I hope you get your wish. one wins the bracelet. Good evening, Dr. Bailey. Good evening. The old fossil, he belongs in a museum. I'd like to embalm him. that I'm delighted to look upon your faces. But you're all I've got. And a man must do the best he can with what fate has thrust upon him through no fault of his own. Hmm. Young man, might I suggest that you adopt a little more pleasant expression? One that would perhaps show a little anticipation. Well, I suppose it's no good mincing matter. You are all my relatives. You all hate me. But you all want my money. And the law says I must give it to you or prove that I'm not insane. <laughs> As though it were sanity to leave money to a pack of vultures. I'm a rich man. But when I look into your faces, I realize how poor I am. For when a man reaches the end of his life without someone to love him, he is poor. Even though it be Silas Wayne who murdered transcontinental amalgamated. Uncle Silas, I don't want anything if you feel that way about it. Why, I'd rather have your good opinion than your money. Well, now, that's nice of you, Claude. Perhaps I haven't appreciated you. And perhaps I have. And maybe you'll be surprised before the night's over. There's nothing to worry about. He's had these attacks before. What kind of attack? The heart. We better get him into bed. Pardon me. Oh, look. 
It's murder. No orders to leave this room. Let me police headquarters. Yeah, well, you better get him down here right away. Okay. Keep the house well guarded. Don't let anybody in or out. Hello, Kelly. Cheerful place, isn't it? Not so cheerful on the second floor. There's something funny about this whole thing. Hello, Doc. Got your note? Yep. Murder. Plenty of witnesses. Here's the knife. Have that analyzed, Doc. All right. You can have him now. Very well. All right, boys. You may take him up. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated as you were. I've had enough of this room. Why do we have to stay here? Lock him up. Yes, sir. I've got a feeling he's the guy we've been promised. He'll obey. Okay, boys. Are there any other objections? Yes. She sat here. No, I did not. No. Let's get along with this business. She's not well. All right. I'll begin with you. What's your name? Bailey. Dr. Bailey. Was Silas Wayne your patient? Yes, for the past six months. Did you know him before that? Yes. His housekeeper has been a patient of mine since my early practice. And she recommended you to Mr. Wayne? Well, I happened to be present during one of his attacks. Mm -hmm. He was a confirmed bachelor, wasn't he? Yes. Now, doctor... Do you suspect anybody? Well, it must have been done by someone in this room. You're right. But you have a suspicion. I'd rather not answer.
Silas Wayne had strong likes and dislikes, didn't he? Well, he was known to be eccentric. But he liked you. He had reason to retain me as his physician. I think that'll be all, Doctor. Would you mind waiting in the hall? You were Mr. Wayne's housekeeper? Yes, I'm Miss Sheen. Mr. Wayne planned to cause an arrest here tonight. Do you know who it might have been? No, sir. How long were you in Mr. Wayne's service? Thirty-five years. Thirty-five years. It's a long time. A lifetime. Sorry, boys. I got orders. No one's to go in. Who are you? I'm... I'm the widow. Thanks, Joe. Toodles in the journal. No, I am, Joe. What chance has a guy got with a game like that around? Don't worry about that stuff, sister. Swell kid. If there's anything hot inside, she'll give us the lowdown. You know, that picture made me so nervous. I could scream with all these silly questions. What did you talk so much for? You notice Claude didn't come clean with all we know about him. You know, I think he knows more about that old miser's business than any of us. I think he has something up his sleeve. Yeah. And as long as he's talking so much, I think I'll have a little talk with him. That'll be all. For the present. Keep your eye on them. I'm going to take another look around, and I want to be alone. Yes, sir. Someone got their wish. You mean everyone. There's a cool million waiting for somebody. Not for you. Not for you. Yes? Yeah. I'll see to that. A threat? A promise. Hello, Nosy. Right back at you, Blackfoot. 
How did you get in? You're a detective. And you're asking me? You still know all the answers, eh? Hey? Uh-huh. All but the one you like. Come on, beat it. Beat it. It's news you're after, not me. Now, look here. I'm here on behalf of a million readers who want to know. Stick around and watch me find out. Listen, Nosey, I'm serious. Run along, will you? I'm here to find a murderer. Well, I've got to print something. How's this? Silas Wayne mysteriously stabbed to death while nine people looked on, two of whom were cops. You would. I suppose the taxpayers will pin medals on him for that. Well, do I print it? You stay, but don't bother me. I'll ignore you. What's the matter, Jeff? You look like you've seen a ghost. Yeah, yeah but I, I've seen a ghost or something, Mr. Claus. I, I, don't, I don't like it in this house. Well, there's too many, too many of them iron gentlemen in this house. He's harmless, Jeff. Just one of the old belted earls. Yeah, 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 yeah but, but who, who belted him? No, no, not that kind of a knight. A knight in armor. A god for the king. You mean you mean a night night guard like like a night watchman? I I don't want him watching after me. There's nothing to worry about. He's been dead for five hundred years. Dead for five hundred years? Just a moment. Are you still here? Well, let me see that wheel. See, you're holding out on me. Brian! Kelly! Round that bunch up. I want to see everybody in the living room. Yes, sir. Where did you get that? In the ice box. Well, give it to me. Yes, sir. Uh, round everybody up and get them in the living room. And uh, stay away from that ice box. Yes, sir. How'd you like to get arrested? Are you proposing? It's no use. I've tried that. What you need is a good spanking. Proposing again? Downstairs for you. The inspector wants to see you. I'll be down in a minute.
of that tootin' thing will play square with us? Sure, she's a swell kid. Well, I hope you're right. Plenty of motors in this well. Possibly I'm keeping my eyes open for a reaction. Claude Wayne. I saw him a few minutes ago. He said he'd be right down. Well, find him. Ryan, see if you can find that guy. I'm sure you won't be interested to know what Silas Wayne was going to say to you tonight. The will he had prepared has been found. Fortunately, or unfortunately, as the case may be, the will was not signed. The first name mentioned is Sarah Bolter. To you, Sarah Bolter, he intended to leave $100,000 upon the birth of your first child. Oh, pardon me. We could never have a child. Don't look at me. The next one mentioned is Miss Sheen. To you and your children, he bequeathed the Candor Diamond. It's always brought bad luck. No, no, you must control yourself. She's terribly upset. Perhaps you permit her to retire. It won't take much longer, then you can all get some rest. Have you any children, Miss Shane? One. But why do you ask? It has nothing to do with this. Nothing, I assure you. Ask her about her husband. Miss Sheen, where is your husband? He's dead. <clears throat> the next bequest concerns Gloria Dryden. The entire residue of the estate was to go to her on condition that she does not marry Robert Wayne. And to Robert Wayne, one dollar was to be bequeathed. I thought he was going to take you away from me. I knew he wouldn't be able to. Please, Robert. At least we can be thankful the will wasn't signed. Why keep that girl bottled up in this joint? She couldn't have had anything to do with the old man's death. Getting soft, eh? Just like a woman. Can I help it if you're blind? Someday you'll find out I'm always right. Here he is. I done nothing, Mr. Police. You're colorblind. Come on. Can, can, can I go now? No, come down here. I know, but, 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 but I, I ain't done nothing. Look, no time wasted here. He certainly must have been rushed out to take that bag with him after packing it. Honest, Sarge, I don't see how he can get out of this house. All our boys are still on the job. I suspect everybody in this room. Will I find a guilty person? No one leaves. He's 
gone. Tell the men outside to keep an eye open. Yes, sir. I told you he had something up his sleeve, didn't I? Claude will never get away. Took a run out powder on you, huh? An overdose. But I expected as much. Read that. I'm going. Where are you going? With you. You're not going with me. You better get back to your paper and write up your story. Don't worry, I'll make the first edition with the glaring headlines of the exploits of that demon sleuth, Flatfoot Mitchell. What's the lowdown? Now, boys, I can't tell you a thing like it back from headquarters. Any clues yet? Oh, come on, open up. Do you really want to know? I'll say. You boys will find out all about it when you read the morning journal. Pop in, nosy. Are you trying to get rid of me? Well, run along now. I'll come back in the morning and I'll show you the murder. I'm promising a solution on the front page. Get a copy. You're promising. I'm promising. Good night, Nosy. Nighty night. Bad dream. Oh, I never dream of you. Well, as long as we can't leave this house, I'm going to get some sleep. All right. I 
Claude Wayne, doctor, dead, and has been for several hours. Obviously, it was caused by strangulation. Send for the coroner, Ryan, and tie that knot. Yes, sir. I can't do it. It's a sailor's knot. You try it, Bolter. So you came back to do some private investigating. Well, get this. I don't need any help from the press. Well, then maybe you can help the press. Who's the killer? He's in this house. And I'm sticking here till I get him. By that time, you'll both die of old age. What a pal. By the way, what was the coroner's report? Silas Wayne's death was caused by the dagger. The sediment in the bottom of the glass I found on the desk was merely a harmless sedative. I'm beginning to love you. Go on. That's all for publication. Oh, I take it back. Where do you think you're going? Uh, I'm going home, sir. You're going where? Uh, I'm going home to Alabama, sir. Well, you can't leave here, Jeff. You're a material witness. Yeah, sir, but, but I know if, if I keep on seeing you and seeing them spooks, there, there ain't going to be no material left, sir. <clears throat> Why, uh, Jeff, you're just seeing things. You run along upstairs and go to bed. Uh, yeah, sir, I know, but I don't want to see that old place. Hey, he's not scared to death. Just scared to death, huh? Well, do something. Do what? There's a bottle of smelling salts in the library desk. Get it.
Not so fast. What have you got in your hand? Nothing. Oh, don't, don't, please don't take that from me. Oh, you don't, you don't know how cruel he is. He deserves to die. He beat me. I warn you. Oh, I'm not afraid. Just to have to live here with him is worse than anything that could happen to me. When I looked on his vicious old face, I said, I'm glad you're dead. I'm glad, glad. <laughs> Got who? Got me. Kelly, take him. Oh, I want a telephone. I knew it was Boulder all the time. Should he get? Just in time, Dr. Bailey. Little surprise party. This is a surprise. Hello. Toodles speaking. Get this headline. It's hot. Of course it's a Wayne murder case. Ready? Silas Wayne Kilbot. His son. Dr. Bailey. Hold everything. I knew Silas Wayne wasn't supposed to be married, but he was. Dr. Bailey was brought into this house by Miss Shane, his mother, and Silas Wayne's wife. Is that authentic? Exhibit A. The birth certificate. Motive. Vengeance. Dr. Bailey bitterly hated Silas Wayne for the way he treated his mother. But how was the crime committed? Well, Dr. Bailey put a sleeping potion in Silas Wayne's medicine. Oh. Oh. Why, Mr. Wayne? What's, What's happening? happening? What's the matter? What is it? Oh. Mr. Wayne. Mr. Wayne, what? Well, there's nothing to worry about. He's had attacks like this before. What kind of attack? The heart. We better get him in bed. Pardon me. Oh, oh look. And here's another item to perk up your circulation. Stephen Bolter tried to murder Gloria Dryden. His obvious motive was to eliminate all the heirs so his wife could inherit the Wayne fortune. What lodge does this represent? Where did he get that? He got it from Claude Wayne. Well, I saw him have it in the library. Why did you refuse to take it then? That stone was an imitation put there by Claude Wayne. He stole the real one. And you killed him. Because Claude Wayne was the only person that knew the secret of your parenting.
that right? Don't forget to give all the credit to Mitchell. He's, well, he's a dear. Hey, Nosy. Was that last authentic? Mm-hmm. Flat foot. I've been holding out on you. I'm Randall Schaefer. You see me, most of you see me, on YouTube hosting Hastings Mystery Theater. And this shirt honors Hastings Mystery Theater. If you would like a souvenir of this shirt or other similar products, take a look at the description down below. You can get yourself a souvenir. Thank you to all the YouTube people who watch us. We appreciate it. What was it like to go to the movies in the 1930s? The experience of going was like an insidious tempting candy we could never get quite enough of. The visit to the dark theater was an escape from the drab realities of the Depression era living, and we were entranced by the never-ending variety of stories. Even at the Great Depression's lowest point, 60 to 80 million Americans attended the movies each week, and in the face of doubt and despair, movies helped sustain national morale. Although the screwball comedy was the most popular movie genre of the 1930s, the western was the most popular B-movie genre, by far. A movie viewer favorite lasting into the 1940s. Murder mystery movies however, were popularized in the early 20th century before film even had sound. Taking inspiration from the 19th century works of Edgar Allan Poe and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and later, Agatha Christie, the popularity of these detective stories lasted well into the 1940s. Hastings Mystery Theatre, where time travel is possible. Come with us as we take you back to a simpler time, back through the corridors of mystery, with murder mystery movies from the 1930s and 40s. If you'd like to show your appreciation in a tangible way, then why not partner with us by giving us a one-time small donation? We'd appreciate that, as it will encourage us to keep them coming, bringing these forgotten gems to you on a regular basis. Simply click on the donate link below, in this video's description, and while you're right there you can click on our mystery merch shop as well. Or visit us on Facebook. Or find our free bonus movie link. Thank you so much.